We've all played some pretty crappy games. Whether you scour the internet for good reviews or you just pick a game randomly, by chance you'll probably play one game that you don't like, even if it may have gotten good reviews. Obviously with Angels of Death, if you've seen my other videos, I think it is bad. That isn't a great game. That doesn't deserve any recognition apart from those serious hardcore anime fans who may want to have a, I don't know, a light novel-esque adventure. And even then, it's not even the best one you could find. The Switch isn't necessarily known for light novels, so you can have that. But what we're looking at this is finally my critique of the game compiled into one easy little video. And the way I like to do is the theme right now is the concept that I could make the game better if I knew how to do all the programming and all that other crap. Sounds like a pretentious comment, and it is inherently. That's kind of what a review is anyway. So this is just pretending like I have the skills, which I don't, to make a game that is interesting to play and can work on all the elements of the game that aren't good. So take it as an alternate reality where Solomon is skilled. But with looking at Angels of Death, the prime factor of this game that is needs to be improved for this to be even qualify as like a seven or eight or nine type of game is the story. And I've ragged on it quite a bit and inherently this plot line is focused on the characters within it. If the characters themselves aren't intriguing, then the story has no basis. And so there's not many characters to the story. You have Ray's parents, you have Ray, Zach, um, three other floor killer-esque people, the whole leader of this entire charade, that's the father figure. I forget all their names, but eh, who cares? But that's essentially who we're working with. And we need to improve these individuals to create a compelling story. In terms of Ray, Ray's character right now is that she's this passive, depressed, hopeless individual who's just really traumatized and she's kind of super focused on religious themes and trying to absolve herself essentially she wakes up and it's not in any way that she has amnesia so much as she's just repressing memories and all that's fine the problem we address here is that we need her get become more lively and which is ironic because she's inherently a dead character I could see us keeping that element to the story, but what we come across with this is we get a very standard arc. She's emotionless at first, but due to a good relationship, she opens up, and we've seen that with many characters in anime before. What I would like to see is more what we see towards the latter half of this game, where she begins to unravel. I want a character from the get-go who is unhinged she's part of the these floors because she is a messed up individual and just because she's repressing her memories i don't think should justify that she's this somewhat calm sedated person i want her to be fanatical just like the rest it can be a little bit more subdued but i want to see some more imperfection in her so that she's just not this doll-like creature that is innocent and boring up until that final act. With Zack, Zack's character, I think, is rather is done rather well, especially when you get to the third act, which is the, the fourth act, I should say, of this series, which is the strongest of them all. Not only because it inserts a little more gameplay elements, but we really see Zack become fleshed out as a character, that he is absolutely stupid, but in his attempts to understand the world, he actually tries. And if he, someone were there to guide him, he'd actually be able to function like your everyday person, but he can't. I think one of the best moments that captures with him is that he's trying to figure out a puzzle where he has to read, but because he can't read, he doesn't know how to do it. And so he spends this excruciatingly long time trying to match Ray's name to this nameplate, and he only does it because he can recognize the scribbles and see her picture on one page. It's kind of heartbreaking in a way that he hasn't had any ability to understand. And we've seen in an earlier scene that he's even trying to write and teach himself to read, but there's no one for him. So he's a really tragic character. 
the part that gets really iffy, and this is a, just a criticism overall, is they are so focused on this promise to kill Ray. And they repeat it and repeat it and repeat it again. It doesn't need to be covered like this. It is something that can be kind of a one and done mentality, or at least revisited once per chapter. It doesn't have to be repeated multiple times. We get it. She's desperate to be killed. He's a serial killer that only likes killing people that's happy because he's a traumatized schmuck. So for most part, we can keep him as he is. I would take some of the comedic elements away from him too because his stupidity at first is a joke and later becomes something more serious. I don't want to dabble in this kind of, oh, look at he's an idiot, ha, 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 kind of mentality. Just make this more what it is, a drama. And like right now, it's a melodrama. As you can see with all this death and destruction in this hallway, there's so much rubble and fire and this hallway goes on forever that you're wondering where the heck did this come from? So those are our two main characters I change. The preacher, I wouldn't necessarily change at all. Oh, he's named Gray, that's correct. Um, because his inherent belief that he created this dungeon, you could say, because he wanted to observe humans in extensuous circumstances. He wanted to act as God and see if he could understand humanity more. It's a little trite, but for this, we can accept it for what it is. In terms of the other characters, Dr. Danny's character is fine. He's obsessed with eyeballs, and he really has this God complex with Ray. It gets to the point, though, where he's overly sinister, overly desperate. He has the opposite problem of Ray, who needs to be more. And the biggest cliche is his tongue wagging all the time when he's evil, and he has an eyeball that has two pupils. It really gets too hammy at that point. Make him this caring person, but who's entirely selfish, who has this antisocial, narcissistic personality. And for the love of God, stop hurting him and pretending that he's dead. There is at least three separate scenes in this game where Danny is supposed to be dead, but lo and behold, he heals himself somehow, even though he's like gutted with the scythe or shot or whatever. And it gets really, really annoying because you know he's not dead. So that's the main thing you take out with him. The next um, character is the little boy. Forgot what his name, I remember in another video. But he's basically a grave digger. And his focus is on making really happy, I don't know, serene graves for people that come onto his floor. We don't really get much of him, especially how he theoretically murders people. All we see is that he buries them. And so he doesn't have depth to begin with, but he follows his basic character follows I have he has a messed up viewpoint of the world where he sees Ray as someone so similar to him that they are meant to be together. He'll kill her just as she wants it to be and he has a crush on her. He's probably within the 8 to 10 year old range, which is creepy. And we have seen those characters in anime before. My biggest issue with him is that his dialogue really gets to the point of consent issues and touches upon like forced relationships and that can be uncomfortable but done well but in this case it isn't it's just kind of awkward and doesn't seem intentional and adjusting his character i'm trying to figure out the main point of him which is i guess innocence that has been messed up and you can say that's the case for all these characters with him i'm almost tempted not to have another kid character in the labyrinth because it gives more of a surprise when you find out that Ray is one of the characters. So if I was to do anything with that little snot-nosed varmint, I think I'd make him an older gentleman that is more fixated on, you know, gravestones and death and that kind of thing. Maybe to the point of necrophilia, but I think we're overreaching at that point. The next floor is Kathy, and she is the most saw-like out of all them. Jigsaw, I mean. That she has all these traps there, and her main thing is that she's trying to make all these prisoners be uh, be punished for their sins, and through punishment they gain, a gain absolution. And that's fine in a sense. There's this slight element that she gets sexually pleasured from all this stuff. And I find her character is just a little too bleh. We have a lot of those crazy people that 
believe they're doing the right thing by torturing others. I think we need something a little more quirky, you could say. Um, she could theoretically play the more up the more sexual elements, become like a bondage type character, but I don't know if that ruins kind of the theme of this game. It doesn't try to be overly crass or disgusting. And so that's one aspect that would kind of clash with the series if we brought it more to that sexual overtone tone element. So what do you do with Kathy? Hmm. I'd almost take another detached attitude that you see with Gray. That we make her more subdued and the trials maybe are a little more, I don't know, understandable. That there is a chance for these individuals to escape and be absolved, not through punishment. Uh, I want to see a little more common sense with her so that she's just not deranged and maybe she could be the more thoughtful one out of all these characters. Again, I'm changing a lot more. Again, these are more opinions than anything. But we want to see something compelling. You go to Ray's parents and they're probably the biggest example of bad character development. They're cast as two parents that absolutely hate Ray, that don't want anything to do with her. They beat each other. The father's a drunk, but he's a policeman. The mother doesn't. We don't know what she does, but she becomes unhinged. She has a gun that can shoot him. Yada, 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 yada. And this kind of super depressing backstory happens in real life, of course. But it's become very cliche within the horror genre that this child is so mistreated, but they're fine. They're good kids until they finally snap. In the case of Ray, she begins sewing creatures together, which is a good element. I think that's pretty creepy. But it's it doesn't feel like enough of a backstory. It's like the cheap way out. That they could have given more depth, a little more nuance to the abuse that they dole out to Ray, and that gets a little more graphic again, but it provides more of a story than her just wanting a family because her family was crazy. So definitely character development is more relevant. In terms of these floors in the general structure, I think it's fine that it's a survival game type experience, but I think we need the floors to be more defined. You have the initial floor where Ray wakes up on it, which is kind of your orientation room. And I'd like a little more substance to that even. What the game likes to do is write little scripts on the wall that speak in high English tones where there's thy and thee and thyself look inward and all this stuff that doesn't really fit. Instead, I'd want, oh, okay, he's doing a little worm on the floor. You get out there, Dr. Danny. Anyway, and Ray shot himself. Moha, what a, what a twist. But I'd want to see something more, I don't know, sterile. Make it an orientation in the traditional sense. Don't make it a typewriter or anything like that. Make it really medical, which it appears to be at first. Then Zack's floor is fine because it really reflects Zack's character, which is an innocent individual who is a killer, but he goes willy-nilly about everything. He's the Jack the Ripper type guy who will kill somebody stupidly. There's no plan or forethought. It's just pure adrenaline. And he has a maze-like structure to his room, which then provides a good theme for it. With the Grave Digger, you find a lot of graves, and so there's that theme, but there's no real understanding of how it kills people like I said it's just a room full of graves and all the puzzles that exist there require two people and so any individual that goes to the floor alone which they're supposed to do it just doesn't make sense and so I want to see more trials I want to see how this character would kill other individuals again put some trials into it where they fall into pits or something like that to make it more thematic. Um, Kathy's goes along the same way. It still has, like its first scene was probably the best where Zack is strapped to an electric chair and the audience watches it and you have to solve a puzzle that destroys the audience and thus ends the sentence. All, most of the rest of the trials though 
don't relate to a real life consequence. So like there's the locked room that's filling with gas. That's not a true execution sequence unless we refer to the Holocaust and I don't want to get that morbid here. They do have also the injections, which you can see in real life. They have the injections that kill people supposedly humanely. And I would very much just like to see that played up, that there's a lot of jail-like elements. You bring a guillotine, for God's sakes, or a noose or anything like that to really give it this prison-like feel. And that that's her way of trying the people that come to her floor. Um, with Father Gray and his church that has the hallucinatory elements, I think that's fine, but in this game where the graphics aren't good and don't do much, it really doesn't pay off well. And so I think it's too much risk for too little reward and that you should go a bit of a different way. I guess you can play the mind games, but you recognize it's a mind game and entirely a mind game there. There's no other horror elements. There's no zombies. There's no nothing unrealistic in the sense of fantasy, so to speak. And so to have one room that features all of these giant snakes and spirits and moving hands, it's at the point where you're wondering why Ray doesn't recognize that it's all just a farce, because you can see it a mile away. And imagine if people are in the same spot, even though they see hallucinations, you know it's not real and that there's no real danger to it. And in the game, when you die to an hallucination, that's just stupid. Um, and so with his floor, you can do something else. I'm not going to go into nigri details. I skipped Dr. Danny's floor. And it's another example of you see how he kills people, but there's not a lot of depth to it, especially not when compared to later levels. So basically, give it more purpose. Give everything a grander element to it especially with gameplay elements either take out most of the gameplay elements don't allow there to be an aspect of death or program them better like when bullets are coming and we have to dodge bullets don't make it that i just have to run straight through from the get-go make it so i have to time myself like you see with other games it's still conventional it's nothing doing anything innovative but it's some gameplay aspect um and those are hitting the major points. Last part of this is just the amount of dialogue. The dialogue's not written well, so tighten that a bit. And come with something a little more grandiose than what's just presented here. Um, it's a witch hunt for the most part, and they're surviving. But it's very straightforward, and there are so many issues in terms of plot holes and inaccuracies, which are annoying as well. It doesn't make it believable at all, and it be all becomes predictable. So you need to change that, and that does change the plot quite a bit, but so be it. Especially change this ending. This ending itself is fine, but it after this, it will skew to it will change to a hospital environment, a psychiatric hospital where Ray's being treated. And she's pretending that she's fine and they don't talk about Zach. She's supposed to believe that Zach's a bad person. And then one night Zach comes and he frees her from there. And he says, I'm come back to kill you. And they jump out the window. And it's not really known if he actually kills her or anything. It's just, meh. I imagine it's these two youths running off into the sunset, ready to do crimes together. Hoo-hoo. And they're wildly, there's a huge difference in age. So that's just weird. But you know what, whatever, because I think the whole ending is garbage. We can talk about other endings that work, but again, throw out anything, just anything at all. But yeah, Zack dies in the end. That'd be cool. Put some more tragedy into this. Or give Ray the death that she's been asking for this entire time, but give her the one she doesn't want. And if we don't want to go tragic like that, that we want to see them, I don't know, turn a page, then yeah, Take what message Ray had at the end where she realized she wanted someone to care about her in life and in death and play upon that rather than putting this uh, pseudo heroic moment at the end that is confusing, not really satisfying. So all those elements are something that I think we could change with the game and make it considerably better. In terms of graphics, I know that this game engine isn't 
the place to make groundbreaking things. The textures are boring and walls can sometimes blend in with each other, especially doorways are hard to see. Um, so I wish I had a graphical upgrade, but again, you work with what you have right here. Oh yeah, definitely take out peepers. That's just a really stupid way to talk about eyes. Angels of Death is a hard game to criticize because inherently it's just the story. It's the story, it's the story, it's the story. If it was better written, it'd be more engaging. I could ignore some of the gameplay elements. But as it is now, it's just boring. And that's the hardest thing about this story is I could predict it from a mile away, even if it was the sort of thing that I didn't actively understand it. Because um, everyone can see my videos and they know that I didn't say, Oh, Ray's evil and she has a floor all by herself. But it's one that you can logically jump to and be like, Ah, okay, I can see you going there. So that's the disappointing part of this. Um, we'll have a review on this out eventually. If I picked a number from my top of my head, I'd probably give it around a round of five if less. So definitely don't recommend to anyone out there. It's not worth your money or your time it takes about if i looked at it correctly four or five hours to complete so it's not a long experience either if you're really interested go watch the anime instead that's a much more enjoyable experience because the animation is better and it goes maybe at a quicker pace so that's what i would say angels of death has been interesting to re to play through it's made me realize that not every game is good to stream or whatever record and so it's been a learning experience for all of us for you for me and for all the characters in this game including zach and ray so thank you for joining me on this wild ride of adventure we'll see where we go i think i do like the concept of i can do it better maybe we'll make that a series since i can be the most arrogant arsehole on the internet solomon rambling so, well, bye.